Rejection is never pleasant and failure <laughs> is never fun. But sometimes that's exactly what we need to push ourselves out of a comfort zone and challenge ourselves to chase an even more audacious goal. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode is how can you transform failure into an entirely new opportunity? This is Invincible Career, and I'm Larry Cornett. I'm going to share an interesting uh, story about one individual transforming failure into opportunity. And maybe you've heard this before, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to start with a couple of quotes. These are actually tweets from Brian Acton. Um, and his first tweet was, Facebook turned me down. It was a great opportunity to connect with some fantastic people. Looking forward to life's next adventure. And then, I think it was a month or two later, he tweeted, got denied by Twitter HQ. That's okay. Would have been a long commute. Most people would experience back-to-back job interview rejections like that and feel pretty discouraged. Who knows? Maybe Brian did too. Maybe Brian felt pretty down on those days, even though he was being positive on Twitter. However, those rejections were an incredible gift. Brian left his engineering job at Yahoo earlier in 2009 uh, we overlapped there, but I don't, I don't think I really knew Brian. Maybe I saw him at a meeting or two. So he'd already left his job and he interviewed with Twitter and Facebook, you know, big tech companies, but both rejected him. So a little bit later that year, he decided to partner with Jan Kuhn to start WhatsApp. Now, five years later, Facebook agreed to acquire WhatsApp for $16 billion. Yes, that's $16 billion with a B, as in boy. The deal left Brian himself worth over about $3 billion. $3 billion. Not bad. Not bad for someone who failed his job interview at Facebook five years earlier, huh? Not bad at all. So Brian had missed the opportunity to join Facebook as like a senior engineer and make probably a few million dollars. I mean, heck, the stock, if he had stuck around and fully vested, probably would have made him worth tens of millions. We can be, we can be more generous. Let's say he got really lucky, got good stock, got in early, and the stock was worth, you know, 100, 200 million. It's a lot of money. However, their gift of rejection was worth so much more, billions more. I'm guessing that Brian looks back on that job interview and thanks his lucky stars that it didn't work out. He's like, hey, so glad you didn't hire me. Talk about an amazing story. I love that story. And there are so many stories like this where there is a silver lining to rejection, to a failure event. A couple more examples. Whitney Wolf Hurd was a co-founder of Tinder, but she faced sexual harassment in the company, filed a lawsuit. Things got pretty unpleasant, as you can imagine. So she left Tinder in 2014, and then she founded Bumble, another dating app that you may or may not be familiar with. She took the company public in 2021. She's currently worth $740 million. It's an incredible amount of money. Uh, and then another story. So 10 years ago, I think this year, a few months ago, Simu Liu got laid off as an accountant by the consulting firm Deloitte. You might be familiar with Deloitte. 
And at the time, I think he felt pretty bad about it. His parents were disappointed. However, it was one of the best things that happened to him because it forced him to invest in his acting career. And now you probably know him as the star of the Marvel movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. (laughs) He tweeted about this and he's like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for firing me. 10 years ago because it gave me the courage to go back to acting and to invest. And, uh, he was in Kim's convenience. If you're familiar with that TV show out of Canada and then became a Marvel movie star. So his life completely changed. Who knows where he'd be. Otherwise he might still be an accountant there. So as painful as rejection and failure might feel in the moment, Sometimes that becomes a positive turning point. Being forced out of a comfortable situation, being knocked off a predictable path, it may very well challenge you to pursue something even better for your life and career. Now, I've linked some of these stories if you want to go read about them and additional information in this episode, it's in the newsletter at newsletter.invinciblecareer.com. This is The Gift of Rejection, issue 389. So you can check that out. You know, bad stuff happens. <clears throat> I have a quote from Adam Grant. If at first you don't succeed, you're in luck. Effortless excellence is a lousy teacher and a fickle friend. And isn't that true? And there's some really bad stuff happening right now. We're in the middle of a recession. Companies are freezing hiring. And for the first time in my long career, tons of job offers are being rescinded. I mean, that used to happen occasionally. It's happening on a massive scale. I mean, Coinbase was rescinding job offers and a number of other companies not, not great. <laughs> you think you have a job, maybe even put a notice you quit because you have a job offer. And then the company says, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We have to rescind that. No job for you. Now what do you do? And thousands of people are being laid off and fired. Netflix had a bunch of layoffs. Peloton's having layoffs. There's a bunch of layoffs going on right now. The crypto market is imploding. You know, Bitcoin's crashing. Ethereum's not looking so great. Who knows what's going to happen with that? But that's obviously impacting, having ripple effects within all the companies that work in the crypto space and and maybe even blockchain. And all of our investment portfolios, our retirement kind of accounts are losing value. Some of them have dropped by more than 50%. Kind of painful. I've stopped looking. I have stopped looking and you may be experiencing some of this or maybe you're insulated from it. I don't know. Or you've had some of these bad experiences in the past. You've experienced a layoff or you've lost a job. We all also know that we will experience some sort of failure or rejection in the future. It is an inevitable side effect of being human. Who doesn't experience failure? And I've taken quite a few hard knocks myself over the years, uh, especially my career. And at the time, yeah, they felt like the end of the world. For example, I knew that a leadership and organizational change had essentially ended my internal career at one company. And that changed like in a week. It happens. There was a reorg leadership change. I was like, okay, this is not good for me. This I'm done. And so I had to find another job. I wasn't fired or laid off, but I knew it wasn't going to be good. So that was the end of my career there. And I've shared the story how I was once laid off, like within a month or two after a startup acquisition, like we got acquired and the parent company laid off the entire organization like two months later and it's like okay now what uh and then another time a massive change in strategy corporate strategy and the leadership at another company meant again my future there was pretty much over 
everything I'd been working on and the relationships I had been building were gone. And it was like, okay, time to move on. It happens. Bad stuff happens. In the corporate world, it happens often. You have to get used to it. You just have to. When I was young and new to all of it, it was like, oh my goodness, this is horrible. But then it happens so much. You know, some companies, we reorged pretty much every six months the entire time I was there. So you just had to learn how to roll with the punches. And when your professional future is disrupted, you, you can't wallow in despair. You can't feel sad about what you lost. I mean, okay, briefly, I'll talk about that. Instead, though, it's better to see it as an opportunity to challenge your assumptions about who you are and what you want for your life. Everything like that is an opportunity to revisit your dreams and goals. And when you feel like you have nothing to lose, you can take a risk. You can fail forward. Reach for something bigger and even more audacious. What do you have to lose? And if it helps, use your anger. Use how upset you're feeling to fuel your comeback and prove people wrong. So if you got laid off or you got fired, show them that they were wrong. Nothing will upset your haters or detractors more than your eventual success and happiness. That will really upset them (laughs) to see you being successful and happy. So why not go for it? And I want to talk a little bit about what I call a weak yes, right? This is like damning with faint praise. A weak yes is the kiss of death too. I have a quote from Og Mendino. Most humans in varying degrees are already dead. In one way or another, they have lost their dreams, their ambitions, their desire for a better life. They have surrendered their fight for self-esteem, and they have compromised their great potential. They have settled for a life of mediocrity, days of despair, and nights of tears. It's a little heavy, but it happens. A lot of people just give up and have a career and a life of mediocrity. And I, I'd rather hear either a really firm yes, like someone just loves me, or no. They want nothing to do with me. They hate me. I'd rather hear that than a maybe. A maybe's like a weak yes. I hate maybes. And you've probably heard this even during your own career, if you didn't get a promotion you were expecting or a raise or, or whatever, you probably heard, well, maybe next time, maybe next year, maybe if you ask me again later, maybe if things change, I heard a lot of that the company's not doing so well. So if things change, maybe next year you'll get a promotion. You know, and a weak yes, isn't much better than a maybe it feels kind of like a consolation prize. This has literally happened to people with job interviews where they've come back later and said, you weren't our first choice, but the other candidate turned us down. They turned our offer down. So now we'd like to make you an offer. Oh boy. (laughs) Your first choice said no. So now I'm the consolation prize. Boy, oh boy, do I feel good about this job. Or hearing something like you're meeting expectations. Keep up the great work. You're doing okay. Not great. Just keep it up. Solid sea level work. <laughs> or uh, this has happened too. Hey, no one else is available. So we're putting you on the project. We didn't think of you. We didn't really want you on the project, but no one else will take it. They're too busy. So we're going to put you on the project. Those things don't feel good. And it's hard. It's hard to work in a job where you're not appreciated or challenged. That's, that's a weak yes. Yeah, you have a job, but it's not exactly a rousing show of support for you and who you are. And you can continue in that cruise control mode for years. 
some people spend their entire career in a company like that. They rest and vest. And I guess that's okay if a job is just a job for someone. That's okay. There are people who just want the paycheck. And I'm not going to say that isn't a valid life choice. It is. But if you're ambitious and you want more for your career, you can't stay in that mode. You have to find a way to shake things up and move up or, or move on. However, change is hard. The unknown can be a bit scary. I get it. It's not easy to willingly quit a solid job and give up a steady paycheck. So sometimes people need a push out of that warm nest and that push may come in the form of a layoff, for example. That happens. But if and when it does happen, it's time to seize that moment to do something greater with your career and your life. So how can you turn rejection into an opportunity? How can you turn failure into something positive? Henry Ford said, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. And that is so true. So true. You learn a lot. Every failure is a learning opportunity. Every rejection is your chance to challenge yourself to reach for something even greater. Don't let it push you into a position of fear and doubt. Don't be tempted to play safer and smaller when you fail. And that can be tempting to get into that defensive position. Perhaps I have a strange reaction to failure and rejection, but I think it has served me well. When it happens, I get this weird feeling of, well, <laughs> what have I got to lose now? If I'm going to fail, I'd rather fail while trying to do something even bigger and more audacious. My wife says I'm a bit strange, and maybe I am. But it has worked for me. It's helped me fail forward. So here are a few steps that I recommend when you experience rejection. And this process can help you transform failure into a launch pad for your next success. And there are seven steps that I've outlined here. Number one is to recover. I kind of alluded to this earlier. You have to take some time to grieve the loss, to recover and process what happened. We aren't machines. Rejection hurts. It does hurt. Failure is not fun. However, you can also work on your mindset and how you view failure. The only people who never experience the pain of rejection and failure are those who never try. They play it safe. But they don't achieve great things in their lives either. Chasing what you want requires risk. If you want to accomplish amazing things, you have to take a swing, multiple swings, and accept that failure is part of the process. Use it to get better and learn how to improve your strategy and execution. And that's the second step. Learn. What can you learn from what happened? Every failure and setback is an opportunity to reevaluate your strategy. Was your approach sound, was it not? Do you need to make some changes? Sometimes your strategy was solid, but your execution was flawed. And if so, take some time and understand what went wrong and what needs to change next time. And that's true with job interviews that fail. It's true with jobs that fail. What did I do wrong? Did I not build the right relationships? Did I not Adapt quickly to the culture. Do I need to learn new skills next time? Did I not answer that question correctly? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that could have gone wrong, so learn from it. We all fail, but not everyone learns from their failures, and so they repeat it. Make sure you do. Make sure you learn so you can improve your odds of success later. Third is to retarget. So what is your new target? 
whatever it is that you were trying to do. After a failure or rejection, you may need to identify a new goal. What you wanted may never work out. You know, sometimes if you're interviewing with a company and it fails, maybe it's just never going to work out. That company's not going to hire you for one reason or another. Or you may have another shot later. I was reading about somebody that had applied to Pixar, I think as a pretty junior animator and got rejected. And they said, hey, you know what? You know, keep learning, keep getting more experience and try again later. And now I believe they are the director of the Buzz Lightyear animated movie that just came out, which is crazy, right? So you may have another shot later, but you know what? You still need to win now. It's not like you can stop living life. You need a job or you need to to figure out what you're going to do. And of course, this depends on what you were trying to accomplish in the first place. I mean, what was the nature of the failure or rejection? Your original goal may still be valid, but maybe you need to adjust your plan to reach it. And that's the next step. Number four, plan. Take what you learned in step two and use it to tune your strategy. It might be time to try a different approach. You may need to update your plan to execute that strategy so you can move forward. And I wrote a ton about planning in the recent book chapter. So I linked that in the newsletter. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com and you can find the link to go check out that chapter about planning. And sometimes we fail because we failed to plan in the first place. Just kind of went for it. And if that was the case, well, now is the time to create a plan to reach your goal versus shooting from the hip again. If it's important to you, it's worth taking the time to prepare well. And that's step five is prepare. Failure taught you a lesson, so now you can better prepare for the next opportunity. And when we see talented people succeed, they sometimes make it all seem so effortless. And we think, well, that must be nice. Must be nice to be so talented be so lucky, something. However, almost every successful person you see worked harder, failed more often, and kept pushing forward more than you'll ever know. You have to remember, you're seeing people's public lives, not their private struggles. Strong preparation increases your odds of success. I talk about that a lot with the people I coach through my invincible career business. We over-prepare for job interviews, tons of research about the company, the people at the company, the products, services. We come up with answers for almost a hundred questions that could be asked, you know, domain questions, behavioral questions practicing their elevator pitch, how they sell themselves, creating their background story and their presentation, things like that. It's over preparation. So it becomes kind of second nature feels natural, but it also serves a secondary purpose to prepare so well. When you know you gave something your all, you will feel proud of yourself no matter what the outcome is versus feeling bad and blaming yourself for not trying hard enough. And I've had that happen. And it's not always that you failed the interview. It just could be that somebody else has better, more relevant experience. But I can tell you the people who really prepared and felt like they nailed it still feel good. I mean, they wish, of course, they got the job offer, but they don't feel bad about themselves. They're like, hey, I did a great job. I interviewed a extremely well. I can't blame myself. I did everything I could. And then talking a little bit about that feeling. So step six is rebuild. Believe me, I know how much rejection and failure can do a number on your confidence. After one of my worst failures, I doubted myself for months and it pretty much killed any chance I had of securing a new win in that time frame. I just was not myself. I wasn't confident. It comes across, right? People can tell. 
interview teams, people that are talking with you about investments, whatever it might be, they can tell when your confidence is shaken and, uh, not attractive, not a good look. And it took me a long time to get my mojo back and recover my full confidence, but I finally did. And it made all the difference in the world, feeling confident again, feeling proud again. So do whatever it takes to rebuild and boost your confidence. And I've written about that before. And I linked that article in uh, this newsletter. So if you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com and check this out, how you can turn rejection into new opportunities. Part of it is, you know, surrounding yourself with people that really believe in you. Some of the best people that support you that can help boost your confidence Investing in your health and your wellness, you know, working out. I've talked about that. You know, I've been working out hard for how long has it been? 14 years, something like that. And feeling physically capable makes you feel confident, makes you feel healthier. That's a good thing. Taking a vacation. Sometimes you need a break. You got to get away from the environment, Try something new, clear your head, and you come back feeling stronger and more confident. So, so much of what we achieve in life is due to having the confidence to pursue it. Yeah, you need the skills and some talent, but the confidence can carry you quite a bit. And then the final step is really just to conquer, to conquer that next challenge. And it will happen eventually. You will. If you keep going, if you keep trying grit and determination, I've talked about this. Angela Duckworth has a great Ted talk on this. It matters so much more than people think. Persistence pays off. It really does. And here's what I think you'll discover. After all of this, there's a silver lining to failure and rejection. Losing something or not getting what you thought you wanted can often be a blessing in disguise. Something better is waiting for you. So turn that failure into fuel. Winston Churchill says, success is your ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. Every time I failed in life, something better came along. Every time someone rejected me, I ended up in a better place. It's true. So, okay, here's, here's a question. Did I actually (laughs) end up in a better place after rejection and failure? Or do I only perceive that things turned out for the better? That's the question. But the answer is it doesn't matter. Perception is reality. What I think and how I feel is all that matters. And I feel damn good about my career and my life. I feel good about how things have turned out. Maybe all I did was turn lemons into lemonade. But I know that I'm happier, I'm healthier, and I'm more fulfilled than I was before. So I'll drink that lemonade every day and keep on smiling. (laughs) And I can tell you, I've witnessed the same with many of my clients. They sometimes end up in an unpleasant situation at work. Things go south and they feel like it's the end of the world. That's often when people come to me, right? Maybe they're still going to work every day, but they're miserable. Or maybe they eventually get caught up in a layoff or they get fired or they they finally do quit and they walk away. But we find a way together. We find a way out of that terrible situation and transform the darkness into light they fail forward and end up in a much better place. This literally just happened last week. One client recently experienced it and landed an amazing job that almost doubled his compensation. I'd say that's a pretty nice outcome after feeling burned by a temporary rejection. So the next time you're facing failure or stinging from rejection, I want you to take a moment and remember these stories. Remember those seven steps. Not only is there a light at the end of the tunnel, but your future 
may also be even brighter because of that failure and rejection. Sometimes we need to be forced out of our comfort zone and reminded of what we really want most for our lives. It can ignite your bravery and passion to pursue what you've always dreamed of doing. Use failure to fuel your drive forward into something greater. And that's it for this week. Um, hope that helps because we all experience it. We all experience failure. We all experience rejection. It's what we do with it. So this is the gift of rejection. It's issue 389. If you want to check it out at newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, I'd love to have you as a subscriber because there is more information in the newsletter and then stuff is linked. Um, and my premium subscribers get to become part of the private community so that we have office hours every Monday and things like that. So as you may have noticed, this podcast is now being released once a month because I made the changes I talked about in the last episode. Uh, but if you didn't hear that, I now have separated the podcast and my newsletters into three to focus on career and life and entrepreneurship. So it's Invincible Career, Invincible Life, and Invincible Solopreneurs. I'm a big fan of solopreneurship. So if you want to check those out, those sound interesting to you. And I'd love to hear from you. So if this is working for you or not, do you want to hear more frequently from me again? I don't know. It's always great to hear from a listener. Um, but thank you. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for listening. If you have the time, you could leave a rating and review with Apple Podcast or on Spotify or wherever it is that you listen to, uh, to this podcast. And I would certainly appreciate it. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck in becoming an opportunity magnet for the best things in life. <laughs>